this and I really want to be wanting the instructions as well yeah okay. want to make sure I'm doing it right Okay, needle nose. I keep saying where's my needle nose? Well, they're in my back pocket for I don't know how long. I don't think I need them right now. I've used to always used to work well, keeping the tools that I'm using in my pants one way or the other. Even if I don't have the carpenter pants on, I use you know all the pockets. But I, my belt broke. Well, it was getting too loose anyway. Yeah, I think I lost a little weight, but uh, I bought a new belt, and the, it's pretty long. It's extra long. I could they didn't have the size down, and either way, I knew I was gonna. Well, the way they're selling them now, they expect you to poke new holes, holes <laughs> in them. But this, one, <coughs> I poked one hole in the perfect spot, at least for in the house and everything. But I just found out that it's not tight enough. It's it would be it would kind of be hurting. You know, it'd kind of be binding. Uh, one more you like another inch in but that's really what I need I think for doing this kind of stuff but I don't have another hole and I don't, I don't mess with it now okay so yeah now I get it oh this thing is extra long and you can cut it to fit good that's kind of what I guess it being that long is kind of what made me think it did the whole thing I mean it didn't look too I wasn't thinking about it but you know that's my story, anyway. Okay, I don't want these up there. Okay, and this will go like that. Oh, it's a little... Oh, it's not shorter. It's just that I'm putting it in a different place. Same length as the other one. Of course, it'll go like this. Okay. It looks shorter when you put it on the outside of it. Okay, I threw that plastic in the box, and I'm going to put this stuff right back in there because i got to clean all that off. And my glue. Let's see. Oh, it's uh. Oh, it must not be s smelly. It's soft. It, it's coming out of there. It's it's not one that you have to punch pu punch open. Uh, and this thing is at least two years old. I believe it's about two years old. Maybe a little more. Maybe two and a half. When I bought this kit here. It's it's seventy six dollars. But you know what? You're either going to spend a fortune on a new dryer that could break in three. Very, very often they break. You know, you see the reviews when I was looking at them. They break in three months. Lucky for them the last two or three years for they break. And you know, the newer ones are going to have all this electronics that it's going to be really hard to diagnose. Expensive to buy the parts. Uh, and if you buy a used dryer, you'd be very lucky to find one for a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars that works and you're buying some there, there's if you buy a 5 10 15 20 year old dryer it's not going to be anywhere near the quality and the, and the longevity of this this one these ones made back then uh and uh so you're just buying somebody else's trouble that that's that uh, saying has never been more true buying someone else's problems than than nowadays so uh i will need my probably need a putty knife and i'll get my cutting knife there oh i know what i can use i'll get it in a minute but i want to kind of look at these instructions first so uh oh that's spanish i don't read spanish no habla espanol I mean, English. Let's see. Yeah, I, I was born and raised in Texas and been around Spanish-speaking people. Uh, well, when I was in school, well, there was uh, one family on this street. It wasn't but a couple of families in Hazel, but then when I grew up and went got a job in town, then I heard Spanish all the time. And... Uh, I only ever learned about 10 or 15 words. 
Some of them you can kind of figure out because they're similar to English, just with a little accent on the end or something. Okay, let's see. I do good. Now I can barely remember my English words. You may have figured that out if you're watching this video. Okay. Notice, this assembly is a factory authorized replacement for the previous system that used a Teflon impregnated top felt as the glide. Oh, really? Yeah, the, I can see the plastic is so much better. The first one lasted from 93 till about 10 years ago. Not even, t yeah, about 10 years ago, I think. Maybe 12. This one lasted, well, how long did it last? Okay, maybe it lasted 10 years. I don't know. See, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, take the front assembly off the door. Remove the old felt. Seal spacer. Glides if used. Clean the surface of arc, removing all residue of old felt. Apply the furnished adhesive to the arc. Oh, arc. Okay, they're calling it an arc because it it goes around the, <laughs> this to forms an arc. Okay, I was like, arc? I wasn't thinking of that kind of arc. Apply the adhesive to the arc. You felt glide simply to the arc. Seal or seal. Note about one eighth of the felt will extend over the lip. You know, I was thinking I was going to put this together and let it dry. I can't put this door back on there. It'll tear it off trying to get this door on there. Because the drum has to go over it. i got to leave it right here until tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'll get it glued up then. Just hit me. One-eighth of the felt will extend over the arc. I guess they're calling this circle with the door an arc. This piece of plastic here is so sharp. It's like a knife after being worn down. Keep hitting it. Grip the drum lip. No, that's the drum lip. Reattach the front panel. Reconnect the dryer to the electrical. Okay. You know, I, th I think that's... Well, maybe this isn't like a new instructions because I did see some instructions for that in there, I think. I think I'm getting hungry again. guess that's not unheard of. I don't know what time it is, but it was... I ate at... Uh, well, I think it was about 1.30 and then... Last time I went in to take go to the restroom and stuff, it was... Yeah, here's some more instructions on that. This other one looks so good, I almost hate to replace it. We'll see. Oh, it's been worn on that side. I think I will. Got it. Well, this is one thing that... I mean, it's basically the front bearing, you know, the front bushing. Okay, I believe that seems what I need to know. Uh. Ow, there's so much sharp stuff on this thing. Screws that hold the door lid on. This this part is in such good shape, I hate to mess it up. You could really, if you, if you had some plastic things to... You know what would be a good thing to do if you if you didn't already have this whole new deal that is peeling, it's old and worn, is like get some of this. Uh, you can buy this uh, this plastic. You can buy some of this. You know, people are use it all the time in their projects and their table saw tables and stuff. Um, that you could buy uh, some of that plastic, but buy like a whole strip instead of just three separate strips, and buy a thicker piece even as thick as you could get in there. And uh, and that some of it has got it, it, certain types that are they self lubricate. They have some oily type substance, you know, made into the plastic, poured you know, poured with the plastic, and they self lubricate. And so that would probably well, this could be that kind. I don't know, but of course you wouldn't want anything that could uh, <laughs> explode in the heat of the dryer. So you might want to double think, double check that all that, but. Uh, Anyway, if you just make sure you get something that can handle heat, and you could uh, 
course, that's not going to be as hot as the back, you know, not anywhere near. It's, uh... Okay, well, what am I going to go get? Well, I don't need the gloves until I start gluing. But I'm going to, oh, putty nice. Yeah, I'm getting too putty nice. To fall down. Well, I was kind of worried about somebody messing it up while it was drying. And I thought, well, I better put some stickers and notes on it and stuff. But now I realize that uh, <coughs> I can't leave it to dry put together. So that's actually good. I think that's a good thing. So what I'll do is I'll glue this on, leave it just like it is. Then I'll probably go ahead and uh, glue that too. Or not glue it, but JB weld it. I'm going to weld it. You ever weld plastic to steel? You could thread that stuff. Of course you can thread it, but will it hold anything? I did see a Project Farm guy on YouTube. He does really good tests. Uh, he's kind of funny. He... He talks like one of those TV announcers. And uh, from back in the older days, you know, where they had those commercials where they talked fast about their tools and stuff, or whatever it was they were selling. It. Uh, anyway, uh, he doesn't, uh, nobody gives him this stuff that he tests. He buys it himself, and so he doesn't have to suck up to anybody <clears throat> he always makes sure to tell you that and he's honest you can tell and uh anyway that might have been the stuff i bought he uh grinded a hole in the head of a lawnmower motor and then put that on there and let it dry and, and it ran good oh and he the one test the last one i saw he did that but with several different ones but he had mended a i think it was a water pipe yeah, or he mended some different types of, let's see, I don't know if he did plastic or, maybe it was another motor. No, I think it might have been galvanized pipe. He grinded a hole in it, you know, a slot in it, and then mended it with that. And um, he held us, and then he put uh, water pre water under pressure. I think he put water in it and then put air pressure on it to get, bring it up to like 125 PSI. And he did a whole bunch of different brands and stuff. And uh, they, uh, this is actually for electrical, for stripping large cable that I got back when I was working in the telco. But it's just, it's longer. So I'm thinking that it'll, might be good. <sighs> Boy, that's on there good. I don't think it's going to, that was why I didn't want to do this. <laughs> because I didn't want to work forever trying to get this stuff off of here because I knew that it would it had that tough glue wow never dreamed to be that hard to get off I'm having second thoughts I'll tell you what you could go around that with a jigsaw but my jigsaw's broke the case cracked on it Get a real thin blade and just go. I can't make a jigsaw sound, but this this is not very sharp anymore anyway. But you don't. I actually don't want them too freaking sharp because then you cut your. You don't want a, a 12 inch gash, quarter inch deep, you know, in your arm if you slip doing cable or cut your thumb off or something. But this is not really sharp. This one is a very thin blade. It's the sharpest one, but it's also. It, That does do it. Oh, yeah, okay. It's the one that does it. You don't have to beat the crap out of it. Now, these are very, these are antique putty knives. They were my great uncles or great, I think they were my, they were my, my no, these were my uh, papaws, my grandpa's my, on my dad's side. Yeah, these were his. I was going to say, I got my hammer, my claw hammer was my great grandfather's on my, gra on my, my pap, mamaw, my, my dad's mother. So, uh, my dad died when I was four, back in, like, 1962. So, I really treasure this, you know, anything I've got left over from them. And my mom and papa lived until 
Well, Pebble died about two or three years before my mom. The late 80s? Yeah, the late 80s. Yes, yeah, so I finally put my gloves on so I wouldn't keep getting up cutting myself up. There was a spot that wasn't glued super tight. I'm keeping on going the same direction because I've got this to back it up. It'd be easier to go this way. Well, no, it wouldn't. You'd hit that. There's a nice thick bunch of hair on there that's going to have to be shaved off somehow though. I don't, I don't know how many, because the glue won't stick good if you just leave it all on there. don't go too far I'm still leaving myself an option of maybe if I don't want to <laughs> take that other one off I hate to leave it though if this side looks like almost like new but right here it was rubbing on that a lot I, I just hate not doing it and then wishing I had later you know what, I, what I'm concerned about well that came off okay oh it's got uh plastic studs in there that's what held that on it was held on good uh, the, this is the only one left at all the rest of them are just gone so it definitely had to be done this is some really thick tough felt you know that could be used for other things uh if you don't if you if you need a uh, you need a rod bearing or crank a crank bearing there you go Better than bacon, right? Okay, so uh, let's put it somewhere. Put it on the box. I think I'm just going to roll those up and put them in that box. You might never know what kind of emergency you might have later. Those are probably just rattling around on there, so I'll move them for now. Okay, that was not so bad once I got the right the tool that worked. I don't know if it's the right tool, but it worked. Now, which way I want to go? I think I want to go this way. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it because this is too heavy to... Oh, I moved it that far and didn't even know it. it it's been worn quite a bit right in there. It doesn't really look... Well, it does look a little thinner. A little pressed down, at least. Oh. That's why I don't like to... I almost want to put that shirt back on just so I don't tear up my mic cables. That up. My other mic is cables bad, you know, the connection into the... I don't want to do with that. I'm going to go back here and kind of... This stuff is getting all over me anyway. I'm going to blow off the... I'm not going to turn the camera this time. Just kind of blow my shirt off and then I don't want to... The felt at least is not like fiberglass or anything. It won't, won't eat into your skin. Make you bleed. But I don't... I don't want it being... In there under another shirt, you know. That's wrong with being clean and while you, clean as you can be while you're working. Just takes it, make you slow.
Okay, let's get the old blue shirt back. It's cooling off just a little. That air compressor is loud. Oh no, turn over my screws. Knocked it over. Well, I see two of them. I don't, luckily it didn't go real far. I don't think I lost anything. The shirt drug it off of there. Been doing good all day. What about not knocking that off. But uh, if I can get this shirt back on. <laughs> well, the first time I went to put it on, I don't know how I did it, but I couldn't find the. I got the right arm on. I couldn't find the left one. Couldn't find it. And I was in front of the mirror too. Finally, I pulled it up and looked at it, and the left one was wrong side out. <laughs> so I wasn't getting that on. Oh, can't move, can't move like that. Oh, it hurts. Okay, I made it. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to count my screws or look at them or whatever. Let's see. I get where I can see them. I should have, okay, those two for the door. And then there should, yeah, those two for the back. And then the rest are leftovers. Yeah, I've got them all. Le rest are leftovers. I think I'll move that so I don't do that again. Where can I move it to? Right there? No. Right there? That looks worse. Okay, I'll leave it like that. Hopefully it won't be where it can get hung on stuff. I don't have any good places to keep stuff up, up this way. Everything has got stuff on it. So, uh, I think I will go get, I know what I want to do. I've got a really handy strap clamp. Long, long time ago, I think my mom gave it to me for Christmas. Long before people started using these tie-down straps for clamps, this was made to be a clamp, and it's kind of really for woodworking and stuff. That's what I used it for anyway. I'm looking at the camera to make sure everything looks like it's working good. Where's that? There it is, the blinking blue light. Okay. And uh, everything is cool with the... See, I had to keep them plugged into the phone chargers to keep it from... Going to sleep and from, you know, the battery's running down. The only one I have to watch is the phone battery in my, in my packet here. Anyway, that clamp is back here somewhere. I think it's in my nail bag that I was talking about. My leather nail bag. I don't, I have used it for other things besides, you know, carpenter work, but. Well, it pulls your pants down too. <coughs> And, uh, anyway, I think that's where that clamp is. And I already have most of the stuff out, so I might as well get it. Ah! I am sore. I'm going to hurt for a week. Not used to working like this. Let's see, there it is. Right where I used to always keep it. Well, I'll just leave that all out like that. Okay, since I talked about it, here we go. Here's the clamp. I just wanted to have it out and ready. You turn it with a screwdriver or a wrench. It's got a hex head and a slot on it. But uh, this is my great grandfather's hammer. Uh, he was still alive when I was little. Uh, this might be my dad's grandfather. I used that when I worked in the cabinet shop in the 70s and 80s. Now, I don't, well, I had it back in the 80s. I don't remember exactly when I got it. Oh, my, my papa had it, but it was my great-grandfather. So it came with my tools for my papa. He gave it to me or something because he was, he was still alive back then. But, you know, that's the best hammer I ever had. The only bad thing about it is it's got a narrow, the metal part up there. Well, it's all metal and it's wrapped in leather. The handle's wrapped in leather. But that metal part, I was used to... Uh, 